What's up people? This is Rishon Reactions here, live on YouTube. So today we are going to do a reaction video of Dave the Useless called Spongebob Needs Help. So let's get this reaction on the road. Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? Hey, That's good. Hey, how you doing? You doing Let all right? me start by saying that I had no intention of telling anyone this, but my friends ordered me to start speaking up. A few months ago, I was searching around CEX for some cheap games when I stumbled upon a SpongeBob DVD entitled SpongeBob Needs Help. Well, no shit. The cover had a picture of SpongeBob sitting on a therapy lounge chair while a man sits across him. An actual man who was a big fat guy with a bald head and glasses. Looked a little bit like me. I paid for the item and the cashier looked at me weirdly before saying, Have a lovely day, sir. I took it to my house and threw the disc into my PS2. The DVD showed some commercials for other SpongeBob DVDs and a weird video of a guy cooking a delicious dinner, mumbling things under his breath. Weird, I thought to myself. But I'm a pretty big fan of dinner, so I was okay with that commercial. Anyway, the main menu appeared, and it was really poor looking. I mean, seriously. It had white text written over a badly cropped picture of Patrick Starr with sunglasses on. There was only one option which read play episode. Oh, I clicked it, and the episode began to play, but without a Paramount or Nickelodeon logo or even a logo of something else unrelated. The intro was okay, but instead of it being the pirate captain who says, Are you ready, kids? It was just a random dude dressed in drag who said, Thought boys, be ready for some real shit. I was horrified. The word shit being said on a kid show? I think not. I didn't stop the DVD, however, as I was weirdly entertained. The intro then played like normal, but the music was odd. It sounded like a rap that would have been made by Eminem or... Snoopy, Snoopy Dog. Also, SpongeBob didn't appear at the end of the intro to play his nose. Instead, it cut to a two-second clip of a man shaking his head. Then again, it may as well have just been me, because I was shaking my head at the time. The title card appeared, and it read, SpongeBob Needs Help, in big red letters on a white background. The funky sax part of the song Careless Whisper was playing in the background. The episode then started with Spongebob cooking Krabby Patties and talking about how he hadn't taken his meds for the day. His eyes began to twitch and turn green. Mr. Krabs then bursts in and yells, Spongebob, me boy! Where be me sweet doll? Spongebob didn't listen and probably didn't give a fuck and instead lunged towards Krabs and proceeded to brutally beat him to death. Well, that is shocking, I thought to myself as I shoved a massive slice of DiGiorno pizza into my mouth. Then the police busted in and grabbed SpongeBob, throwing him into one of their cop cars outside the Krusty Krab. I was about to get a second slice of pizza before, before something that I cannot explain to this very day happened somehow, some way. One of the police officers stared at me, right in the middle of the screen. It's not delivery, Todd. It's DiGiorno. I was indeed eating DiGiorno pizza, as I just said. You should fucking listen. You'd remember that. A time card came up on the screen, which read two hours later. Only it wasn't read by the usual French narrator, and that was read by someone who sounded Jamaican. After the time card, an outside view of a building entitled the Bikini Bottom House of Mental Health was shown. SpongeBob was taken in by two officers into a therapy room. The therapist looked like the guy on the front of the DVD, and he said, So, Nathan, I see you haven't had your meds again. Nathan? I said to myself out loud. Why would he be calling SpongeBob Nathan? Suddenly, Spongebob changed from being, well, Spongebob to a man who looked like he was in his 20s wearing a yellow shirt and brown trousers. The therapist, after I looked at his name tag, 
learned that his name was Gabe Daniels, and he looked at SpongeBob with contempt before saying, Nathan, you've got to stop doing this. You're not a sea sponge. There's no bikini bottom. There isn't a crusty crab. And yes, your mother named you after a hot dog company. Nathan looked at Gabe and said in a voice that sounded like Mike Myers and Cat in the Hat, Want to prove that, Buster? Before lunging at Gabe like SpongeBob did to Mr. Krabs earlier in the episode. However, Nathan was restrained by two bodyguards, and one of them looked like the guy who was cooking his dinner earlier. And the other looked like the guy who was dressed in drag. Oh, from the intro, okay. They held Nathan down as Gabe pulled a large, dirty needle filled with green liquid. I'm afraid this is going to hurt. Gabe said, before throwing the needle right into Nathan's neck, knocking him out. I was so scared. I mean, really, I hate needles. Who doesn't? So then Gabe had the bodyguards carry the now unconscious Nathan to his new room at the metal ward. After Nathan is placed into his bed, Nathan gently pats his head before saying in a quiet whisper, Welcome home, Nathan. The episode then ended with the credits being displayed as white text on a black background. The music that played during the credits was... Smoke weed every day, but sung by the French narrator. Then once the credits were over, it showed a sick clip of a man wearing a potato sack over his head, carrying a chainsaw, chasing a farmer down a field, yelling, Get off me property! The disc then popped out of my PS2 by itself, as if it acknowledged how shit it was. I put it back in so I could record it as proof of its existence. I recorded it, but the only difference was that the post credits scene had the man with the chainsaw staring at the screen and said rather happily, too happily, I may add, if I might add, I may add, I will add it, so there. You know like me episode? It then showed a video of Mickey Mouse dancing on ice while demonic music played in the background. I recorded that, too. The following day, I emailed Nickelodeon, hoping to get some answers about the episode. They emailed back with, Hi! Sorry we scared you, though we don't see what that has to do with your fetish. You see, the episode you watched was actually intended to be the series finale of SpongeBob SquarePants. It was canceled for being too dark, as well as the fact that we've decided to renew the series for a 13th season. We like the money. Please do not go public with the DVD, as it could ruin our reputation. And thank you for your time. Lots of love, Nickelodeon staff interns. Yes, the, the, the memo was, was full of typos. And that's why I just told it to you that way to to emulate the typos in the memo. I called 999 as I needed someone who'd actually give me some answers. The police arrived at my door a few hours later and a big fat policeman walked in. He was wearing a black police uniform. I'm not sure why I noticed that, but I did. He sat down in the living room and let out a giant obnoxious fart and it made the ground shake. Right, you lot, get out of here. I need to talk to this young man in private, if you don't mind. The policeman said that as his fellow officers were happy to leave to get away from the smell of the fart. I'm not in trouble, am I? I asked. All I can say... All I can say... All I can say is that your DVD might be useful in a possible lawsuit against Nickelodeon. I'll need to know how you found it, boy, and if you want to appeal for compensation. The policeman said that, but then he farted even louder than last time. If I was going to sue anyone, I'd rather sue him. Ten minutes later, I got up off the sofa and asked if the policeman who revealed his name to be Ray Maniels wanted a cup of tea. He said yes, so I headed into the kitchen to start making it. Rabe then got off the sofa after another large fart and began speaking again. This DVD worries me. You see, these kind of lost episode things tend to be just rumors. Stories that people make up just to get attention. But from the footage you show me, by all accounts, it appears to be genuine. Rabe said before continuing. This DVD is trouble, boy. And the person who made it, that's also trouble. It's my job eliminating trouble. I, I heard him say that as he put his big meaty hand around my mouth. What the hell are you doing? I yelled at the top of my lungs. 
We told you to not go public about our DVD. Rabe yelled as he made his grip on my mouth tighter and tighter. Workers Board of Ranchers, I yelled in a muffled voice. And answers you shall have, Rabe said as he made his grip tighter and tighter. I looked at him and realized he was a therapist from the episode. Just as I thought I was about to die, I heard the door slam open as Rape's fellow officers came in holding donuts and coffee. Sup, Rabe? You forgot your dough. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. One of the officers cried. Rabe let me go and ran off into the outside world never to be seen again. We're probably all better off for it, given how loud and obnoxious his farts were. I passed out from the fart stench after falling onto the floor. Months have passed since the incident, and life has gone back to normal for the most part. I still don't know what that policeman wanted with me, or if he even was a policeman now that I think about it, but rest assured, my friend, as I've got the two best cops, Sam and Max, on the case. Rave also took the camera with him, which I used to record the episode with, meaning 